morning. Hi, guys. You're probably wondering why we're all dressed up. <laughs> we wanted to welcome you to the last episode of the Straw Bale Toolshed build. Uh, today, we'll be talking about putting in the floor as well as the door. And otherwise, this build is wrapped up. Yes. We, we want to thank you for all your support, comments, suggestions. And uh, this is not going to be the last build that we're going to do. After this, uh, you'll be seeing the installation of our septic system. And then after that, it's the it's house. It's the house. I can't finally. believe it. We've been on the property about 14 months now, and yeah. we're finally getting around to building the house. We had to wait till the septic was installed uh, before we could get started on it, and that is now completed, so no more excuses. If you have any questions about the build or anything else that we've done around here, please feel free to let us know. And we're going to try to set up a live on YouTube next week where you'll be able to talk, speak with us live and ask us any questions you have about uh, anything that's going on here on our property. What we have done in the past and what we're going to do right. in the future. We'll Just also, the house, yeah. what our plans are and stuff like this, right? Right. We'll also be able to discuss all the uh, things that we would do differently on the projects that we've done. For instance, uh, this is our second straw bale building, and we've learned a lot along the way. So we want to make sure that we keep you guys up to date and share our uh, knowledge that we've uh, gained through making mistakes as part of the process. That's true. But the building's not going to fall down. So let's get started with this episode. Again, thanks for all your support, and we'll see you next time. See you soon. Bye. Bye. And now that the exterior of the straw bale tool shed is complete it's time to get a floor in this thing the other day i was at lowe's and i picked up some 12 by 12 by inch and a half concrete pavers very similar to what i used to install the patio in front of our trailer here you can see them i got 63 of them and i got a bag of quick crete so the plan is to lay these out with a one half to three quarter inch uh, gap between the stones. And instead of using a mortar, I will be using the quickcrete. And I plan on just sweeping it in after the stones have all been laid and then uh, wetting it down with a hose and letting it solidify. First thing I gotta do though is empty out the inside here. We had some big wind last night, so I just quickly threw all our tarps inside here. But the interior walls are drying up nicely. As you can see, just a few spots left that have to dry out. And again, so there's a wall that High Carb Hannah did. I did this one, did that one, High Carb Hannah, and Yvonne did this one here. And let's not forget the midlife prices because they were instrumental in helping us get to the first coat done, which is the grunt work of cob plastering. First coat's easy, or pardon me, top coat is easy. The first coat, that's where all the work is involved. So I wanna thank them again. Otherwise, uh, we have now our bottle bricks stored up here and we're getting ready to finish this project up. So let me get this cleared out and we'll get going on the floor. So I got a four foot level here and I'm going to see what we have to work with. I know there's dips and valleys in this floor, but I should be able to screed it out relatively flat. Just want to get an idea of what the, what the slope is. Not too bad. If I'm pushing down like that, it's actually right there. That's dead level. So that's not bad at all. It's going this way. Got a slope of about, actually that's a level right there too. Just a lot better than I thought it was gonna be.
I've got the floor screened at level, relatively level, and smoothed out. So what I'm going to do now is grab the hose and give it a fine misting and then come back and tamp it down. And that'll prep us for laying down the pavers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the doorway and I'm going to run a paver centered in the doorway to the back wall. Then I'm going to put one on either side of that paver. So I'll have three columns going to the back wall and then I'll figure out my distance to the side. What I want to do is minimize my cuts. So I've started my layout and what I've decided to do is use these wooden stakes that I have as spacers. And... So I've laid out the first two rows and I'm just going to continue this all the way to the back and then work out to the sides. So we have all these solid or full size blocks laid out as possible, as many as possible. And now we have to do some cuts on the edges. Um, let me just show you around. We did go flush on one side to minimize the amount of cuts we have to do. And over here, this wall is going to have a wall a uh, shelving unit on it, so the cuts will be below the shelving unit. So I'm going to use a angle grinder with a four and a half inch diamond disc on it and start cutting these blocks. Okay, we have the pavers all laid out. And it took a little while because I ended up having to cut the entire back row, this entire row over here along the wall as well, had to be trimmed. So... I went to the uh, hardware store and I got a diamond blade for my four and a half inch angle grinder and it went through like butter. It was great. I just had to mark it and cut it from both sides, but it gave a really nice clean cut. I'll show you real quick the blade that I used on the angle grinder. Diamond blade ran about 15 bucks and it gave very clean cuts. I mean, there you can see, you can see where there's a ridge because I cut it from both sides but super clean, didn't have to break it, didn't have to use a cold chisel, and I was even able to slice off small pieces like this real clean. So it was definitely worth the 15 bucks. Right, a few more minutes after I cleaned up, I figured I'd get something else done. And what this is, is a four by four that I cut uh, to the width of the door opening. And so it's gonna be a threshold. It was a uh, pressure treated lumber. I shoshugi bonded it and linseed oiled it. And it really uh, comes out super black. And it stays that way, too. This is the uh, same technique I used on the legs for uh, Yvonne's planting table or potting table, whatever you want to call it. So tomorrow, after this gets uh, dr dry, what I'm going to do is put that in here as a threshold. And I'll use that same, uh, that same spacer right there. And I'm gonna bury it down so that the final height is the same height as the stone. So I've just uh, trenched out and installed the four x four. And this is now the new threshold. I'm debating whether I should get three or four more pieces of four x four Shoshugi bond them and continue this out to the outer edge of the building, creating, I guess, more or less like a welcome mat. I know that's maybe sounds a little crazy, but it might be necessary when it comes to installing a door. We'll see. This is a mix of our native soil, sifted. I did end up adding about 15% clay and about 10% uh, Portland cement. And what I did was I took it and just emptied it onto the uh, pavers spread it with my hand, and then I'll broom it, and then we're going to wet it down. And then probably have to do that at least one more time to fill these, fill all these gaps. We've wet this down real thoroughly so that the uh, material that we just put in 
should be wet through and through. Now we're going to give this a couple hours to dry so that we can do a second coat or a second round of the same process. Good morning. I'm standing in the doorway of the tool shed and what's missing from this picture is a door. So that's what's on the agenda today is to build a door. And the reason I'm standing in here is to get out of the wind because we've been having some cold and windy weather lately. We had winds yesterday of about 25 miles an hour average, and uh, we're looking at temperatures of about 40 degrees right now. So it's pretty cold, but the work's got to get done. So we're going to build a door. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I picked up some roughs on four by fours yesterday. I'm going to show shoe on them and then I'm going to cut them and build this threshold all the way out to the outer edge of the building. So that'll be about another three pieces of four by four. They'll get Shoshugi Bond set into the ground at the same level as the one uh, right here by the pavers. And that'll create the basis for our door. And then I picked up some half inch uh, uh, BC plywood yesterday, and as well as some hinges and some two by fours. And I'm gonna construct a door out of that material. So cold or not, let's get going. I want to show you a quick uh, a quick overview of the stages of the Shoshuki bond process. This is the rough sawn 4x4 in its untreated uh, state. After it gets burned and scrubbed down with a scrubby pad, it looks like this. Now you can see that it turns it It turns it uh, a much darker, like almost a coffee brown, and is much smoother. This is very rough here, and all this roughness is burned off through the fire, and it becomes smooth. Uh, it then gets uh, smoothed out even more when I scrub it down with that um, with that Scotch Brite pad to take all the soot off, and then once it, the soot is off, I then treat it with a linseed oil, and here you can see the difference the linseed oil make. It turns it much blacker. And so one good coat of this linseed oil, I'm going to let this dry for about uh, four or five hours, and then I'll be able to install this threshold. So I've got the three four by fours installed, and I needed an additional two by four there on the end in order to bring it out level with the outside of the wall. And that also is rough sawn lumber. I also shoshuki bond that and linseed oiled it. After I installed each one of these four by fours, I screwed it to each other using uh, six inch timber lock screws, the same screws that I used uh, when installing the rafters on the building. So now what I'm gonna do is in order to make it work so that it came right to the edge of the building, I had to leave a little bit of a gap in between. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill those gaps right now with some quick crete and then soak it down and let that solidify. It's solid the way it is. 
but I wouldn't mind if, uh, if those gaps were filled. I've got it filled in. The cracks filled in with quickcrete. It was a little tough because the aggregate in the quickcrete was almost a little too big to fit into these gaps. So I worked it in the best I could with a trowel, and now I'm just going to get a watering can and wet it down. While the septic was being installed, I managed to get to the door put together. Uh, I just basically used half-inch plywood, some 2 by 4s and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these voids right here with the same metal that you see up on the side of the tool shed. As you can see, I've put two coats of polyurethane on the door before installing this corrugated metal. I'm trying to get a good fit on this, and as you can see, I'm kind of fiddling around. I get it cut, and the width is good, but the height, there's just a gap that I was unsatisfied with, which is why I decided to take it from the bottom portion of the door and use this piece retrimmed for the top. Okay, now that the hinges have been installed, uh, I also want to show you that I used stainless steel roofing screws to attach this uh, corrugated metal. And this was mostly just for a design feature. And then I decided to use it on the hinges as well, just to make sure that everything was nice and uniform. So the ne next thing I need to do is put a latch on this uh, door to keep it shut, and then we'll be good to go. I decided to go with a simple barrel latch that allows us to keep the door secured as well as use a padlock to lock it when we go away. Simple but effective. 